so many thousands of years. Because if you look at the pulse, it's constant. Okay, now the battery has been sitting for almost a year. Nobody touches the batteries. Nobody touches the heat. So if, if it took these batteries that were sitting for a year and brought them up, now they're boiling. They're sitting over there boiling. Now, if you don't think they're boiling, take your key and pop off one of the top. Now, a boiling battery usually gets hot on a conventional charger, right? Go fill the battery. Fill the battery, excuse me. How big a bank of batteries do you have? 1,800 amp hours. <laughs> Oh, yeah, big ones. They're going to be here. Okay. This thing doesn't care because it's a minute my, my thing. That it's a trigger. That's all it is. It's a trigger for the energy. Excuse me. <clears throat> Why, what, is this one on 36 volt? Is there a particular reason for that? It takes 36 volts to run what we want to run. Okay. <clears throat> so why wouldn't the bit swapper be able to isolate these batteries and pull them in and out? Because the swapper pulls current from each battery. So if, if you're that, if you if you're gonna power your house or do something like that or use that energy that's in the batteries which I don't have an inverter here, they left it back there. But I was gonna run 3,000 watts worth of lights and just shine them at you and let the batteries just keep going. Okay, so you can have about three kilowatts off these batteries. They're car batteries. Right. They're not deep cycle batteries. But it's better to have deep cycle batteries? Absolutely. Okay. So I could be running this with a solar panel, I could be running this with a ground battery, which you guys will see if you paid to go into the conference. John never leaves you. <laughs> He's always got something, so if you miss this, it's it's you, it's not me. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just pop the top if you don't believe it. Oh, he did. Did he? Yeah, he's popped up. What? What did you well, this specific gravity meter to dip in there? <laughs> no, what they are is micro bubbles if you watch very closely. Yeah, I thought I saw the no, current is only big bubbles. That's where the heat comes from. It's made not to heat it. Does your 10 coil work very similar to this principle? No. Here? No. Charge batteries? No, this is a totally different machine because you see the coil arrangement. Yeah. So with the and bottom see, what? With the monopole, you have to condition the batteries, right? With no, you don't have to condition anything, you know, if you, if you have a good battery. Okay. But if you're desulfating a battery, then you have to run that battery until the sulfation is off the plate. So it's like a window washer. You're looking out a foggy window. You're not getting a good view, right? Well, if you can't move the ions to the plate, you don't have a battery. It's all about how can you move the ion with no current. So That's no, what you mean by it's a trigger? Yeah. It's, the, it's what's making the motion happen there? Well, what's happening is you supplying a trigger to the motor, right? And this little trigger, this is not much at all. You know, compared to the size of the machine and compared to the size of the coils. It's my new. It's like million. And that's why they're totally doing No, he. No, they could swap the batteries anytime they want. But I feel like running on a dead battery. So. <laughs> <laughs>
I could actually pull the power from that battery and bring it over to this battery. <coughs> Could you do that with a switch? Too? I didn't clean anything because I wanted everybody to see this has been sitting forever. So basically, the battery's dead. This is about the four or five, two or three amps over there. What? This, this, there's 10. 10 amps? There's two. It's about, maybe at the peak, maybe three. But since those batteries are charged, it's drawing nothing, see? Because you don't want to over potentialize the battery. The more the battery charges, the less So they're usually pretty darn even, one to one, when the batteries are swapped around and then that's the cold switch in the box you'll see this is the primary that's the secondary now the primaries have lifted themselves for no unexpected reason and the secondary is like this So you figure out you see that it's about two or three minutes. Plus the mechanical horsepower of 46 foot pounds of torque. So now you want to multiply that in with that. Why did you say that the cold switch was turning into the primary? The cold switch feeds back to itself and it's isolated from the primary circuit. In other words, it doesn't see the negative and it doesn't see the positive. So there can't be anything like Lenz's law involved. Okay, because Lenz would slow you down right now and there's no such thing here. I'm sure if you're really looking, you can find it somewhere in one way. But, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't bother. So it's automatic over there, and you'll see these these circuits working and be able to actually witness them in there. So now what can we do with it, right? All we need to do is get a 36 volt inverter and come out here at night and watch how long the battery is. I'll be here. Actually, this leaves because this is not part of it. This was just what Rick wanted to do. And so, will you take a, a, a ride with this car over there? You mean did I ride in it? Yeah. Well, I did. Will someone ride? Right? <laughs> no, if you go go look at it, they're still finishing the motor. Yeah, well, he just wanted you to see the, the window motor in there. Okay. Power one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sense of why there's a difference at night with the recovery, with the collection of the energy? Do you have Magnetic any? fields change. 